Okay, we're recording here. All right, welcome everybody. I am Dr. Dawn Seglane. Happy to have you here with me today uh, talking about immunity with autoimmunity. Uh, so everyone here uh, who has registered, you're getting the PowerPoint. Everyone on social media, you can still register for this PowerPoint, but it will all be uploaded to our YouTube channel with the PowerPoint included for you to watch at a later time, okay? But feel free to take notes. There's going to be a lot of information here today. I'm really excited to share this information with all of you. Uh, I had a battle, yeah, I call it a battle. I had a situation, I had auto, an autoimmune condition. Uh, I had lupus uh, and I reversed it and it's been successfully reversed now for a number of years and I got my life back. So anyone out there suffering with an autoimmune condition, my heart goes out to you. I know how uh, it feels, I've been there. Um, so I've walked the walk and now I'm here I, to talk the talk and share all these pearls of information with you because it is multifaceted. This is not um, an easy fix, but when you get to the root cause, it is much simpler to understand and clearer to under understand what you need to do to feel better. So for anyone new who hasn't met me, hello, my pleasure to have you here with me today. I am Dr. Dawn Siglane. I just go by Dr. Dawn because it's a lot easier to pronounce and remember. <laughs> and who doesn't love a good sunrise, right? Anyone, uh, any of those morning people out there that loves a good sunrise? Yeah. So I am, I am a naturopathic doctor. I uh, am board certified and licensed in the state of Connecticut. I am still able to practice in New York, which is a pre-licensed state. And we are praying and hoping for licensure very soon. Uh, I also studied um, for chi traditional Chinese medicine, so I have my master's of acupuncture, uh, and I love acupuncture. Acupuncture is a wonderful complement with naturopathic medicine, using Western medicine with the naturopathic and Eastern medicine with acupuncture and Chinese medicine is beautiful. Uh, they, they work together hand in hand very well. Uh, and now uh, what we're doing is telehealth visits. So with the video conferencing, I can still use acupressure. I can still walk my patients through certain acupressure points. I can do the tongue diagnosis. I can see it very clearly and help them as well. It's really beautiful medicine. So uh, I'm also a Reiki practitioner. I also in the past, and I still, you know, do it for myself, personal training. So uh, working out, working your body out, the mind-body connection is real people. It's a big deal. Uh, taking care of your body takes care of your mind. Uh, I love, I, I love uh, switching up workouts, doing workouts with my patients, inspiring people to work out. There's so many, um, things to look at if someone's not working out. And we're gonna talk about pain in the body and that's something to deal with. And if you can get past that, or if you can get, do, do something to just move, you'll feel better. So personal training uh, is, is in the core of me. And I also started many moons ago as a health coach. This is kind of how I got very interested in this. So natural medicine heals. So this whole world of natural medicine, this is what I'm going to share with you guys today. Uh, it treats the root cause of disease. It's beautiful. When you understand the root cause of disease, there is true healing. There can be immediate as well as long-term relief, okay? And it reverses chronic conditions. Uh, so what is the immune system? It is a network of cells, tissues, proteins, and our organs. It protects our bodies from infection and disease, okay? There are primary components to the immune system. So we're looking at lymph nodes, the tonsils, the spleen, bone marrow, thymus. Uh, the gut, 70%, oh, more than that, more than 70% of our immune system lies in our gut. So gut health is so important. Important. Uh, this gut-associated lymphoid tissue called the GALT, GALT, G-A-L-T. Uh, so our, the gut health is so important. In naturopathic medical school, they always taught us when in doubt, treat the gut. Uh, it's so important that the gut is functioning properly. If there's inflammation in the gut, reverse that. You're going to feel better. So understanding 
uh, what it means if there's inflammation in the gut, okay? This chronic inflammation uh, kind of runs rampant in the body. Uh, the problem with autoimmune conditions also with this immune system is that if you have one condition, if inflammation is causing one condition is the gateway for multiple conditions, okay? And you're not gonna feel well with chronic inflammation, even with one condition. Um, and I'll talk about that. I mean, that happened with me. I had a multitude of conditions. I had the chronic inflammation. It was leading to lupus. I had IBS. I also had heavy metal toxicity at the time. I had so many things going on. I get it, guys. And you don't feel well when it's going on. Uh, so this immune system has a proper response. When it's working properly, it detects the threat, you know, whether it be a bacteria or a virus, whatever's going on, it triggers a proper immune response to destroy it. And there's two parts of the immune system. And this can get really complicated. So I'm taking all the highlights from it to make this uh, very applicable and, under and for you to understand, okay? So there's two parts of the immune system. There's our innate immune system and our adaptive immune system. The innate immune system is this natural protection we are born with. Hopefully, some people aren't born and, and, and they're missing certain parts and, and they're suffering. And that's something different. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break that down too. Uh, this innate immunity, it acts quickly. So things like excess mucus production, getting a fever, that's our innate immunity going, uh-oh, boop, boop, something's wrong, let's fix it, okay? So fever, right, is not necessarily such a bad thing, okay? The fever is the body purging itself, responding to a pathogen and getting rid of it. It's the proper way that it works. So we don't necessarily want to always calm down a fever. Let, let the body ride it out. It's doing it's what it needs to do, okay? There's also levels of you know infancy and ages and how high it gets, but it shouldn't raise uh, such fear or, oh my gosh, I have to do something. Let the fever ride out. Uh, it's not such a bad thing, okay? There's always exceptions to this, but for the most part, um, and especially when you're an adult, let the fever ride out, okay, if you can handle it. Uh, it's not so bad, the body is doing what it needs to do. Uh, and then there's the adaptive immune system. It's the protection that we gain throughout our life through disease exposure, and it's slower acting. So something for like five to 10 days it takes uh, to create this and for the body to then produce these antibodies. And now the body has this beautiful memory to destroy and eliminate the offender when it sees it again. So your response isn't um, going to mount and typically you don't feel as bad the next time that, that you're faced with this. That's how that adaptive immune, immune response works. And what could go wrong with our immune system? A lot, a lot can go wrong with it, okay? Um, so there are immune system disorders, okay? So there's primary immune deficiency. So this is kind of what I was just talking about before. Um, with at birth, you're just not equipped with what, with what um, is gonna help your immune system. Uh, so there's disorders, there's poor or absent functioning of one or more components of the immune system. Uh, you know, there's low levels of ser serum immunoglobulins uh, and antibodies, and it leads to an increased susceptibility to infection. So that is not really what I'll be talking about today, okay? So that um, doesn't fall under what, I'm what I'll be talking about today. Uh, there's also secondary and acquired immune deficiencies, right? These can happen sometimes uh, as a result of drugs, chemotherapy, um, malnutrition, things like that. HIV falls under this, okay? So not necessarily what I'll be talking about, focusing on autoimmune conditions today, but then there's also the overactive immune system where you're reacting to allergens, right? So sometimes this is a genetic disposition or epigenetics. So what's epigenetics? All the things I'm gonna be talking about today. The control that you have over your own health based on what you're eating, what you're choosing to do uh, with your spare time for all these healthy habits to help you, um, and, and all the choices that you're making and it impacts your health. So for better or for good. So hopefully they're good decisions that are helping you. Um, this overactive immune system. So think about asthma, atopic dermatitis, allergic rhinitis. So there is a connection too with um, having, being a, a baby who was, was born under cesarean section tends to have more of these issues rising in them. 
And why? Because their flora, when they were born, the, the, um, the good bacteria is different. When you're born vaginally, you get that, that, uh, the flora that you need, that vaginal flora is really good for our immune system, right? Because our gut health. So there's a connection there of that. So, but not to say someone with a C-section, you know, they're going to have these issues, but there is a big correlation there that of these connections with them. Now there are ways that you can support the system though, to calm that down. So if you've been listening to any of my lectures, um, when it comes with, to having an overactive immune system, calming that down to do that naturally, people find a lot of relief with asthma by what? Just avoiding uh, dairy can help too. So avoiding things that can affect the immune system that are inflammatory can calm that down. But what I'm going to be talking about today is autoimmune disease, autoimmune disease, autoimmune illness. You might also hear an autoimmune condition. They're all the same. That's what we're talking about today. So what is an autoimmune condition? It's when the immune system turns against you. How dare you, right? <laughs> it doesn't feel good. So this is, I mean, this is a, and it's a systemic issue. Okay. The body attacks normal and healthy tissue. It's doing this by mistake, but it thinks it's doing the right thing. It's programmed now to think this way. Uh, your immune system is attacking certain cells in your body and it, it happens differently. So, but there are all these different names of it. Um, there's a root cause for all of this guys, but let's just go through it. Okay. But going through this can make your head spin. So if you're, if your head's spinning, um, just take deep breaths because I'm going to have answers for you. So lupus is a big one that um, many people are suffering from, uh, and it's affecting all these tissues, brain, heart, lungs, kidneys, skin, joints, blood cells, okay? Sjogren's, dry mucous membranes, everywhere. It's not just the eyes, uh, all the mucous membranes, right? Vaginal tissues, uh, it's all of them, you know, think about that. Um, really dry, this dryness that you just can't quench. It's very, very uncomfortable. Celiac disease. And it's attacking the small intestine tissue right there. This inflammation in the gut, It's a, then it's an immune reaction to gluten. Of course, avoiding gluten and you can feel a lot better. Um, inflammation being that underlying cause there. Diabetes even. So it's attacking your pancreatic cells. Um, it's affecting your insulin. It's affecting uh, your body in that way. So now they're showing that even diabetes type two is beyond the metabolic syndrome. It's an autoimmune condition. Hashimoto's. So the thyroid gland, so many thyroid issues going on. Rheumatoid arthritis and a bunch of our a family of arthritis here. Rheumatoid arthritis affecting your joints, but on both sides of the joints. Okay. And there's swelling and then even causes deformities in the joints. Uh, ankylosing spondylitis. So this is an arthritis affecting primarily the spine. Um, and I'll never forget, I had a doctor who came in to med school, medical school and he did a grand rounds and he reversed his ankylosing spondylitis. You know, it's empowering to hear these stories. Uh, so so if, you're, if you're one of the lucky ones out there and you've reversed your autoimmune condition, keep telling your story, you know, share what you've done to do it. People need to know about this. Uh, multiple sclerosis. I know someone who had this and she, all of her, all of her symptoms are at bay. Okay. Affecting the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord, the protective li lining of the nerves, this nerve pain, it, you know, it shoots right through you. Very, very, very painful. Uh, vasculitis affecting the blood vessels, alopecia, right? So your hair follicles are even affected. Um, based on this with your immune system. And a major culprit there is stress. So I'm gonna be talking about stress throughout here, throughout this because the underlying cause, and then you go even further, where's the inflammation coming from? Is it stress, right? You gotta figure out what's causing this inflammation. And if stress is it, really get a hold of it. And how can you reverse that stress? So lots to think about. What is the root cause of autoimmune disease? Inflammation. Okay, so now, and I have to preface this by saying this, because um, you see things and they say, oh, but you can't cure, there's no cure. Yes, there's truth to that. But when you reverse the chronic inflammation, when you reverse the root cause, reverse that root cause of a disease, the symptoms melt away. I'm gonna tell my story also. Um, Labs are undetected. You, you buy the labs, you cannot 
see any, any diagnosis of a condition there and you get your life back, you feel better. You do know, okay, I had a predisposition to an autoimmune disease and now you know better. Once you feel better, you're going to know the signs of not feeling well, the signs of imbalance in the body. And then you dial it back. You go, all right, what, you know, I've been making some bad food choices. I've had a lot of stress in my life. Be gentle on yourself. Go back, do what feels good to feel better. Okay. Um, but when you know that you've had an autoimmune condition, or if you currently have one, you take the steps to reverse it. You feel better. Why not live a life that you feel better and you keep all those symptoms at bay where it's nearly undetectable and, and you have your life back. This is possible. So what is inflammation? It's a normal biological response, okay? It's our defense mechanism in our body. Our immune system goes into effect to recognize these damaged cells, pathogens, or irritants, okay? And there's a acute and chronic inflammation. So acute inflammation, harmful bacteria comes in, or there's a tissue injury. We've all had that. You know, you, you cut and scrape your knee. Infections and wounds need these inflammatory processes to heal. So this has to work in the body, okay? The innate immune response system that I was talking about, it's nonspecific. So it comes in and it works right away. It starts rapidly and it lasts for a few days up to a few weeks. Now over to chronic inflammation. The cause, pathogens that the body cannot break down, okay? Can be a virus. What are we dealing with right now, okay? Um, a foreign body, an overactive immune response. Over time, this is going to lead to chronic inflammation, okay? Can affect these internal organs. It's a slow onset of symptoms and it can last from months to years. I had chronic inflammation for decades, decades. Going to doctor after doctor, asking for help, asking for relief, telling them I didn't feel better. And what did they tell me? You look healthy, you're young, you're fine. The most frustrating response is when you don't feel well and your doctor says you're fine because the labs don't show it. Go to a doctor who knows better. A doctor who understands root cause medicine, who understands chronic inflammation. If you suspect you have an autoimmune condition, find a doctor that will help you. It's very frustrating and I feel your pain if you've been there. I know how it feels. Uh, so the body's reaction, so it has an acute response to this inflammation. Acute, you want healing. Uh, or it might turn into an abscess and then you have some pus, right? The body is just having these inflammatory reactions to try to heal. If it's not resolved, this could lead to a chronic state and here, in and here lies the problem. So this chronic inflammation the body's reacting with tissue death, Ugh. thickening and scarring of connective tissue. It happens. I felt it. It's painful. Okay. And it wreaks havoc on the body. And I have to make uh, this, this comment with an inflammation versus infection. So inflammation does not mean infection, right? So you can have the inflammation doesn't mean that you, that you ever had an infection either. Okay, uh, you, you eat inflammatory foods, you have stress in your life, and you have inflammation. There was no bacteria or virus that necessarily caused that, right? But an infection that does not reverse itself and does not heal and or does not clear itself out of the body, right? So what's one of those things I was talking about? Gut health. So you run a stool test or, you know, you look at the gut. I've talked about this before in previous lectures, and then you find a bacteria or a pathogen that's just kind of been lurking in the gut. You got to get rid of that. Okay. You have to deal with that issue there. And then you deal with the infection and then the inflammation can go away. You could feel better. So that infection can cause inflammation. So there's a big difference there. It's important to know, to know that and understand it. So there's external and then internal inflammation, okay? External can be acute or chronic. Same thing with internal, except internally is typically chronic. Uh, with the external, so acute, we all know an acute external situation there, a cut, a scrape, or a bruise, okay? Chronically, we're talking about eczema, psoriasis, okay? So internally, right, it can be acute. So something like surgery, a drug reaction, you know, appendicitis, those are acute internal in inflammatory reactions. Chronic, this is where autoimmune condition comes in. 
even mental illness. Okay, think about inflammation. External inflammation. Gross picture, right? I know, but I just had to pick it. I felt like it was kind of like artsy and like cute at the same time, like totally gross. Like nobody wants this, right? Red eye. Uh, so it's painful. There's a lot of redness going on. Sometimes you can't move that part of the body that is inflamed, right? And there might be swelling. I experienced this in my hands. I'll talk about that. And there's that heat, all right? So some correlations with this internal inflammation. Uh, so there's this fatigue, okay? This tiredness. Um, and this fatigue it can mix with this fever, but this tiredness, so with, my, with myself, and if anyone has experienced this, this fatigue came in around three o'clock every day, like clockwork. Three o'clock, I just get so tired. I couldn't do anything. Couldn't meet friends out for a cup of tea. Couldn't meet anyone out for coffee. Uh, not for coffee, for dinner. You know, anything like that. I, I would want to do nothing for the rest of my day. Three o'clock, I'd be really, really tired. Uh, or struggling. If I had to do something, I was struggling. I was pushing myself. This fever, which could also arise at the same time around that three o'clock, um, typically afternoon or evening, could be any time though. And if there's night sweats, major sign that there's an imbalance in the body, okay? So excluding something like perimenopause, you know, or menopause, it, it's, a diff it's different than these hot flashes. Um, so this, these night sweats are important to understand. Um, when you feel better, when you reverse the inflammation, you feel better, these night sweats go away. They do go away. Joint pain, okay, deep in the joints. This joint pain that I felt, it's different than, than just like, oh, you bruised yourself or pain with a workout. It's a different kind of pain. I would always tell my, I would always tell doctors, it just feels so weird. Um, but at both sides of the body and got worse, got worse. There was no injury. I worked out all the time. I couldn't figure out what was going on. Uh, rashes. So sometimes with lupus, there'll be that malar rash or any kind of rashes throughout the body, okay, internal inflammation. You have to look deeper, look at gut health, look, is there inflammation systemically? What's going on? The skin being our largest organ, is it's releasing heat in some way. Um, so, so rashes are, are important to understand. You don't wanna suppress these rashes. You don't just wanna put a cream over it, a steroid cream over it, because now you're pushing this inflammation even further into the body. So now you're masking the symptoms, but you're not feeling better, it, over time, you will feel worse. So you have to understand where this rash is coming from. Is it chronic inflammation? Abdominal or chest pain, okay? So inflammation hurts. Um, now, is it chest pain? Maybe you wanna go to your cardiologist, get that checked out, make sure this is not cardiac related, right? Not related to your heart. So you wanna rule out you know, anything else that it could be um, and find doctors who understand this, okay? Mouth sores, so when you think of the whole GI tract, so the GI tract starts in the mouth all the way to the anus. So if there are sores, ulcers in the mouth, think about chronic inflammation, what's going on, okay? Don't just avoid the foods that make your, the sores hurt. Think about overall, what are you eating that's causing these sores? You, you, to have these sores, this is a, a red flag. It's a sign of inflammation in the body somewhere. Uh, this edema, so edema is swelling in the body. Anywhere that there's swelling or, you know, whether it be in the hands or the feet, overall body edema, facial edema, um, figure out what's going on. If it's chronic inflammation, you reverse the inflammation, then you can feel better, okay? Just taking diuretics isn't going to be the answer, right? We need to dig deeper, something to think about. So causes of chronic inflammation, right? The inability, the body can't eliminate what, what happened to cause the initial acute inflammation, right? Is it a pathogen? Is it a virus? Is it a bacteria that's just sitting there lurking and affecting the body? The body attacking normal, healthy tissue, autoimmune disease. The body thinks this tissue is a pathogen causing the disease, but it's actually your own tissue. It's yourself. It's been tricked. It's been fooled. We have to bring the body back to balance so it's not, it's so it gets wired properly. It's not able to think right. 
And then we have to talk about all these exposures to irritants over a long period of time, right? GMOs, these genetically modified organisms, bad news, guys, bad, bad news, pesticides, insecticides, bad news, bad news. I just um, joined up with an organic uh, landscaper, best decision ever, uh, you know, so something to think about, you know, think if you got pets at home, if you're treating your care, your lawn with all these pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, and your pets out there with their face in the grass, their little body parts are all touching it, and they're getting, they're getting exposed to these chemicals, that's not good for them, okay? It's not good for the earth. It's not good for nature. Let's have a happy world right? We should all be growing gardens all over our yards uh, and using quality, uh, you know, uh, I don't even want to say chemicals, but using, you know, ways to support your gardening that are healthy for the world and healthy for you, not using chemicals. There's other options. There's other ways, okay? Are you really out there judging everyone's lawns? Does everyone really care? Come on, you know, um, so think about this. These are important things to think about. Think about what you're using. So women, all the cosmetics, hair dyes, lotions, guys too, shampoos, body washes. What are you cleaning your house with? Um, toothpaste, all these, there's so many chemicals in these things, guys. There's healthier options out there. So look for them. Um, I've got tons of options. I, I live this. So any questions, let me know. Amalgam fillings, shoving mercury in our teeth. And the poor dentists that were doing this for so long, it's really bad for our health. So these amalgam fillings, these silver fillings, if you have them in there, find a holistic dentist, a mercury safe dentist that can remove them, right? And they're out there. Uh, there's a couple here on Long Island um, that I'm happy to recommend. So, you know, um, finding a dentist that understands that is so important. Uh, and if you're a dentist out there that's not mercury safe, really look into it for your own health. Um, cause you want to be able to remove that mercury safely for yourself and also for your employees. And of course, for your patient, uh, electromagnetic frequencies, these EMFs, uh, people react, uh, you know, you should not be having your phone up to your ear. Uh, people will have heat in their ear and along their jaw, you know, just having the phone there, have it on speakerphone if you have to, um, I'm a big fan of having crystals around to kind of offset that vibrational force that it has. Uh, also keep your phone away from you at night. If you're having trouble sleeping, is it because your phone's right next to you? It should be out of your room. Put it in airplane mode, shut it off. Put in airplane mode first and then shut it off. Um, it's sending signals, sending signals to your brain. It's not good, okay? Um, but we have to have a balance, right? We, we wanna have our internet. We wanna have our phone with us. It's how we're communicating. So you have to make it work for you, okay? Easy does it. Don't overdo things. There's proper precautions that you can take, but being aware of this, and there are people who are really, really, really sensitive to these EMFs. Respect that, understand that, uh, and know that. And it's particularly, if you have this chronic inflammation on the rise, you might even be more sensitive. You might be finding that you're more sensitive to it. So get to that root cause, reverse that inflammation, and maybe you're able to then cope with and manage the EMFs a little bit better. Maybe, maybe not. You know, it's something to think about. So any toxin really, okay? So get, find a doctor who does the heavy metal testing. Find out if there's a load in your body. So this inflammation, what are you doing when you have this inflammation? All your body knows what to do is fight this inflammation all the time. And then what is it doing? Putting you into a stressful mode, uh, you're using your sympathetic nervous system because you're constantly fighting off the inflammation. So even if you're just like, oh, I'm not stressed, but if your body's stressed, you're stressed, okay? If you have autoimmune disease, if you have an autoimmune con disease, condition, illness, you're stressed out, your body's stressed out, okay? You might think you're the most zen person because you're doing yoga every morning, but guess what? If you're suffering with the inflammation, it's stressful on your body, okay? Because it's fighting it every second of every day. That's all it's doing. Um, so stress is a major factor. So think about it. Okay. So you might be one of those people, I'm not stressed out. Like everything rolls off my shoulder, but if you do have stress, any sort of stress load, it affects your health. It does bottom line. Okay. I'm going to talk about what I was doing when I, when I found out my diagnosis, I was in medical school. Naturopathic medical school is just about the least naturopathic thing I could, anyone could do for themselves. We always have that joke about that in school. 
and look what happened to me. Everything kind of came to a head, but came to like this beautiful storm of me to correct it. And now look, I get to help you guys and I get to help my patients. So, you know, it, it, I love it. There's silver linings, right? So you have to think about. Yeah, that's the other thing, you know, thinking that you're not a victim in all this. That's a big piece of the picture, you know, and I have patients come in and, you know, if you have no hope, there's hope. I'm here to tell you that there's hope because the doctors told me that there was no hope because pretty much they had no answers for me. Um, one of my favorite things that I was told, the doctor said, oh, you're, you're my, I had a lot of symptoms. So he goes, your symptoms were all over the place. We like symptoms to be in a box. And that way we can do, we can fit a diagnosis because all the symptoms are in a box and we can code for it. We can't do that for you. So you're fine. I mean, this was actually a conversation that I had and I go, so my point of telling you that is not to say that conventional medicine isn't the answer because sometimes it is the answer, right? But you have to know what doctor you're going for, for the healing that you want. If you want to reverse your inflammation, you go to a doctor that does that a doctor that works with root cause medicine, someone like a naturopathic doctor. And the body has three ways of communicating with you. It whispers to you, it talks to you, and then it screams to you. If it's whispering to you, you're really in tune with your body and you're catching something early. Awesome. Sometimes people miss it, but the healthier you are, the, the less chronic disease that you have, the more in tune with your body that you are, the more that you give the body the micronutrients and the proper nutrition that it needs, the more you can recognize this. Okay, and then if you don't hear it when it whispers to you and it keeps on going and it compounds, then it, then it talks to you. So when I went through my condition, I would say it was talking very loudly to me because I was in a lot of, a lot of pain. Um, and then the body screams at you. So that's where conventional care could come in. That might be where you find yourself in the emergency room that you're really not feeling well, okay? And you've let it go on too long. If you think about it, Things that I'm saying today might help you and you reflect on it and you go, ah, oh, there were warning signs along the way. That happened with me. There were warning signs. Uh, unfortunately, I was going to, I was trying to be proactive. Nobody could help me until I found naturopathic medicine. That's how it worked for me. So there's a difference between immunosuppression and immunomodulation. Okay. So conventional medicine, this is how they're trained, right? So it's like, you can't go to get pizza at a taco shop. They, they serve tacos there, right? Uh, you know, so you can't go to one doctor and expect something when they've been trained a certain way. So this is how conventional medicine treats it, okay? And it, it does provide relief temporarily, suppresses the inflammation, the medications that are used, immunosuppressive drugs, steroids, oral injections, or creams. The issue here is that the steroids affect your cartilage over time. They affect your overall health. This is not an answer. Neither is the immunosuppressive drug therapy, okay? Um, because there are so many side effects. You're not going to feel well. You're not going to have your life back. Symptomatic care to manage symptoms. There's NSAIDs, which are pain and inflammation. Acetaminophen, <clears throat> which is pain, but not the inflammation, okay? So you have to know what you're taking for what you want the side effects are rampant. They're all over the place. So people come in um, and I will look up the medications that you're on to see what, what uh, deficiencies you have. So the nutrient deficiencies, and there's a lot of them. Okay. Uh, you don't want to take a medication for a side effect because then you have to take another medication for that side effect. How does that make sense? It's, that's not medicine to actually help and heal. The answer, naturopathic medicine. It addresses the root cause of chronic inflammation. It's, doesn't the difference here is that it calms and reverses inflammation. This is key. Suppressing inflammation is one thing, calming down inflammation and then eventually reversing inflammation is the healing mechanism here. The symptoms alleviate naturally. You just feel better. These symptoms melt away and there are no side effects. I'm here to tell you guys, there are no side effects. And so with a naturopathic doctor, you get a comprehensive medical intake, 90 minutes, okay? So who was the first doctor uh, to tell me when I had lupus? It was a naturopathic doctor. Um, and here's the thing with diagnosis also, is that it unravels people. When I was told I had lupus, I was in denial. In fact, I was in denial for a whole entire year before I took action. So I get it. You, these, to get a diagnosis, but why wait for a diagnosis when you can do so much before the diagnosis by going to a doctor who understands 
what this looks like for you to feel better. Okay. Um, so after that comprehensive medical intake with the naturopathic doctor, you're going to get information of nutrition, healthy habit, ha habits, and supplements. And that's what I'm here to talk about. Okay. So immunomodulation naturally. So it's therapy that activates or calms down the immune system. Okay. So what the body needs. So you give the body what it needs and it feels better. Okay. So um, it restores immune functioning. It gives the body what it needs to, re to return to what we call homeostasis, bringing the body back to balance. But this goes beyond supplementation. So what did I see, you know, when we were hit uh, with, with the virus here and everyone's coming in and they just want supplements. But whoa, 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 whoa. You can't just take everything under the sun, especially if you have an autoimmune condition. That's not the answer for you. You can make things worse. And the good news here, which I've been trickling in this whole time, is that the chronic inflammation is reversible with naturopathic medicine. Okay? It's true. I'm here to tell you that. And I know many people who have been down that same road. I, I, and I see patients go through this. One of the most beautiful things I see is seeing the lab work go from positive to negative. Okay, and I'm gonna talk about this. So I reversed my autoimmune condition. So I had a positive ANA, anti-nuclear antibodies is what it's on the lab work for decades. I had these cold hands and cold feet and they would turn white and purple all these call oh it was so 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 and it was painful when it, this chronic inflammation got really bad it be it became it got so painful oh it hurts i'm like remembering it now um and and i had this since i was a teenager so going to the doctor and what they told me was i had raynaud's so raynaud's is a diagnosis of exclusion means that the antibodies weren't showing up yet on my lab work yet my ana was positive okay so they said oh you have raynaud's um, and they always just told me I had poor circulation. That was the answer. So, so what do I do about that? You know, so I would always work out. I would always wear gloves, you know, take care of myself, but there's more to it. They were missing that, that little, that piece for me to tell me my symptoms got worse. And what happened when this was all going down? I told you I was in naturopathic medical school, just about the most inflammatory situation I can be in because why I'm taking tests, multiple tests every day for four years for my doctorate. I was also going for another year for acupuncture, five years total. I was so stressed out. I mean, I think I, I tend to, you know, handle stress. Okay. But obviously I wasn't, it was affecting me in this, in this way. Um, and what was I also doing? And this will make sense when I talk about nutrition. I was making my own tomato sauce. So I was a naturopathic medical student. I was trying to do my food prep. I was like, oh, let me get these organic tomatoes. And I love tomato sauce. And I would just have it there to kind of throw on everything. I'm a big sauce person. Sauces make things delicious. Uh, and I was having tomato sauce multiple times a day, definitely daily. Um, it, it was kind of a staple in, in my diet. That's what I was doing. Um, but my symptoms were getting worse. So remember, so I had a naturopathic doctor tell me, I think you have lupus. I was in denial. Um, then I had two more doctors tell me, I think you have lupus. I think that you have lupus. Um, eventually, I believe the third one, and I did the testing to find out the diagnosis. But I had this fatigue at three o'clock every day, like clockwork. So what I would do, I would wake up in the morning and do my studying. I'd hit the ground running at like five or 6 a.m. because I knew I would feel good at that time. I had this joint pain, this weird pain. I was always working out. It got to the point, my weights, I couldn't really lift them up. I was lifting like three pounds. I was depressed. And then at the very end, this is what freaked me out. I was, I had these swollen hands upon waking up in the morning. And it was like, they were these, they were so swollen. They'd be swollen for about a half hour until I got moving. And then the swelling would go away. And it started in my right hand. And then it started in my left hand. And I was just like, what is going on? right? Um, so my lab work, there's something called titers. When you measure the ANA, they were increasing. So throughout that year, I went every few months and they kept going higher and higher. And I was feeling worse as they were going up. Um, the antibody had not yet shown up on conventional labs. So I did a specialized test. I'll tell you to, what it was. And it did detect lupus. So it detected it on a scale from negative five, which means that you don't have anything, negative four, negative three. So it shows it creeping up negative two. I was at negative one. And then once you cross over the threshold of zero, that's when the antibody is showing up. Um, so if I were to have waited for a conventional, 
for that lab to show me that the antibody was positive, I would have been really bad. I mean, I was already on the, uh, you know, go, going down a bad road. So I got the test. I woke up. I understood the root cause. I took my health into my own hands. I understood this chronic inflammation and what it meant. And I did the anti-inflammatory diet. I healthy habits, this mind body connection, doing everything healthy possible for my body and supplementation that was proper for me within weeks. I tell you, I felt relief. I cut out that tomato sauce. I'm going to talk about all these things that I did. Um, and there were other, I also had heavy metal toxicity. You know, I would, there were, you know, I had IBS that went away. So all these things that I was dealing with, you know, I dealt with them also. I detoxed the mercury and the aluminum. Um, you know, and so I, I, yeah, you come at it through a bunch of different ways. That's what it takes. So you have to put in the effort. You have to find a doctor who can walk you through this. Okay. Um, and you have to have that hope that you're going to feel better. Okay. And you're not a victim. You just have to make different choices, healthier choices. Okay. What, what's the best way to be in this world is to be able to adapt. What is this virus teaching us right now to adapt, right? You have to change with the times. If you have an autoimmune condition, take hold of it. Hold your head up high. Look for someone who can help you to reverse the inflammation. So what? My labs were negative for the ANA, and they've been like that for years. That My autoimmune condition is now undetectable on labs. It's the best. So what can you do to feel better? I've been telling you guys this. So you find a doctor who will listen to your concerns. They don't just look at a lab and say, everything's fine. No, they hear you, they listen to you, and they run the appropriate labs. There's so many more labs to run than just the basic labs. And run all those inflammatory markers. Run that ANA with the titers. Run the antibodies, okay? See if those immune markers do show up. Don't miss that. That's, that's, an, that's an easy enough thing to try and test for. The test that I took, it was called Avise by Exogen. Uh, also explore heavy metal toxins, okay? So when the body's fighting inflammation, it can't detox properly. There's a good chance that, that there's some toxic load there. Uh, you reverse the inflammation. It's only going to help you to feel better and help you to detox the toxins, right? Do a stool test. So if there's any gut dysbiosis, anything going on, what's going on in there? What's going on in there? Figure it out, okay? So proper diet, lifestyle changes, healthy habits, habits and supplementation. Um, and then there's other ways to complement it. So you can get acupuncture, right? Get a good acupuncturist on your side. Energy healing, that whole world of energy healing. If you vibe with that, if that's something that works for you, wow, how it, that is powerful healing, okay? It, we've got these chakra systems, they're running through our bodies, these energy wheels. You want free flow in the body. When there's chronic inflammation, things are stopped and they're halted and they're not moving and working properly. If you're open to energy healing, that can be a, a wonderful complement to all the things I've been talking about naturopathically. Chiropractor, right? You want proper alignment in your body. Chiropractors can make, the, make a world of difference when it comes to that. Physical therapists, um, you know, so, so plenty of options to explore and to have a whole team of healers on your side, okay? So I'm talking about naturally decreasing inflammation and how to support your immune system. So we have to get to the root cause. That's the ultimate wellness. That's the key to everything. And it makes it so much simpler because you can't run around putting band-aids on symptoms. No one's going to feel better that way. And you're just going to have side effects to doing something like that. But there are ways that you can support your system to feel better in the interim. If it's taking a while to reverse the inflammation. I understand that. Three ways to combat this chronic inflammation, nutrition, lifestyle changes, and supplements. I keep saying it, right? So nutrition, what do you have to do? The anti-inflammatory diet, okay? So this is my introduction to it. The nightshades, the family of nightshades, what the heck are they? I'm going to explain to the, you this to them. Peppers, black pepper spice is okay, but avoid the peppers, God, I have patients who go, but I, but I love peppers. I love my hot sauce. Well, if you're going to keep eating it. So it's like, so here's the deal with nightshades. And, you know, I started explaining this to people and I felt like these green lights went off. So with celiac disease, if someone eats gluten, just a little piece, a little cracker, their whole day or week is ruined, right? With celiac disease, these nightshades, they have a similar effect with 
with this autoimmune condition, with autoimmune condition and the chronic inflammation. It might not be as direct and you can make that correlation like gluten with the celiac, but it's enough where over time it has, it's a hazard to the body. So I hope that that makes it clear how detrimental these nightshades are. I'm going to explain what a nightshade is, but these are the guys to watch out for. Tomatoes. What was I doing? Making tomato sauce, eating tomato sauce all the time. <laughs> like, hello, lupus, you know, just come walk right into my life and let's just start a fire. Uh, eggplant, white potato, but sweet potato is okay. So sweet potatoes are wonderful and delicious. Okay, and, and if you want to eat those skins for, for fiber. So what are nightshades? So it comes from this botanical family, Solanaceae, such a fun word to say. And it produces this um, the product called solanine in the stems and the leaves. So it is an alkaloid, which is a naturally occurring organic compound with nitrogen. Trace amounts of nicotine and capsaicin are in them, and it poisons the nerve of any insect that eats the plant. So it's a protective mechanism, right? That, that's what it is. Um, the problem with alkaloids is that if your gut health is compromised, so if you have chronic inflammation, chances are there's inflammation somewhere in the gut also. These alkaloids are irritating the gut lining, and it actually boosts the immune system response. So this is not what we're looking to do. We're looking for immunomodulation, right? We don't want that boost. That's, that's that's going to affect an autoimmune condition. That's not what you want. That's not how you are going to help to feel better. You want to calm down that inflammatory response, calm down that the, the, the immune system that way, like I was talking about, right? And some animals cannot detox these alkaloids, okay? Other inflammatory culprits. So there's more than just the family of nightshades, but start with those four. I think that that's pretty easy to try and remember. Uh, and some people with those nightshades respond to some more than others. So play around with it. If you're in a really bad state, just avoid all of them. And then when you're feeling better, you know, trickle them back into your life and see. It's, it's kind of a guessing game. Um, but, you know, naturopathic doctors will walk you through that. Um, sugar, major inflammatory culprit. And it's so addictive. What are processed carbs also? sugar and processed carbs, you know, there's just so much junk in that, especially folic acid. The body doesn't know what to do with that. It's a synthetic form of folate. We don't want it. We eat gluten because it's been so overly processed. It's, it's just not good for anybody. It's inflammatory. Dairy, totally inflammatory. I have already gone off on dairy in other lectures. So, you know, don't get me started, right? Uh, dairy, ew. Blech. Um, eggs, can also be inflammatory, right? Unless you have, you know, your own chicken coop and you've got your happy chickens, you know, laying happy eggs and the chickens are eating all good foods. Uh, that's a different story, but there's something else that's going on behind the scenes. If, if, if you don't have your own chickens, um, there's a lot, there's a lot that's going into these eggs. Okay. Um, that, that causes inflammation, meat, inflammatory. All right. Bottom line with that. Um, so, so what am I talking about here, right? Um, whole food, plant-based diet, optimal, okay? Um, oils, except for avocado, coconut, and olive. But when you think about absorb it, eating an oil too, you know, why not just eat the whole food? Because that whole uh, avocado, you have all the fiber of the food. So especially if someone trying to lose weight, I would avoid oils in general, right? Not, not so healthy for you. Um, I enjoy, I put olive oil, coconut oil on my body as a moisturizer. I leave it at that. Um, you can cook, you know, water with tons of herbs in there. Um, there's, there's, uh, there's plenty of ways um, also, you know, to, to cook there. Uh, alcohol, it's inflammatory, okay? Especially in excess. So you have to think, what do I do for stress release? Okay, does that cup of wine help you or is it hurting you? Or a glass of wine, who drinks a cup of wine, a glass of wine. Um, when I was going through my situation, um, I could not even look at alcohol. Having a sip of it, I, I couldn't handle it, okay? But it wasn't the alcohol, right? Wine's never the problem. Uh, it was the inflammation in my body that couldn't handle it and it just set it off. So, so major dish issue. Um, more bit, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but lectins, um, anyone with an autoimmune condition, I'm sure that you've come across it. Is it a bad guy? Potentially, okay. 
Uh, so these beans, you know, so what can you do? You could soak these beans, soak these lentils, and that might make it a little easier to take, but why is it a bad guy? So it's the protein in these legumes. It binds to the carbohydrates in the bloodstream. It's an irritant to the gut. Um, research has shown that there's some blood specific blood types have the sensitivity to it. So maybe that's why some people react to it and not. So it could vary based on the individual. So what can I eat? There's a world of delicious food that you can eat. Okay. First and foremost, hydrate. The cells in your body are thirsty. Hydrate, drink quality filtered water, half your body in ounces, right? So if you weigh 120 pounds, for example, you want to be drinking 60 ounces of filtered water. So I had this picture of golden milk, like a dairy-free golden milk. It has full of turmeric, um, tons of health benefits in there. Uh, very tasty. You can make it with um, some almond milk or uh, some oat milk, uh, you know, and flavor it the way that you want. Um, really delicious. There's even a, a vegan ghee out there that I really love to make it with. So it's really nice, especially in the winter. It's nice warm. You make a big pot of it and everyone can enjoy it. So what did I do when the wonderful world of tomatoes was taken from me? I added beets. So you kind of want, and I make a vegetable stew with it, or I make a gluten-free lasagna. Sometimes I call it gluten-free casserole because just, you know, it's just putting veggies together um, with different, you know, zucchini noodles or um, lentil noodles or things like that. But I add beets and that makes it look kind of red. So that's a transition that you can make. Life goes on without tomatoes, right? So, and sauces are my life. I was talking about that. So, and what I just made a, a pizza last night with cauliflower crust. Um, so what was my sauce on that? So you can use butter. This is my key. This is what I've made up. So butternut squash soup or a sweet potato soup. Okay. And I put nutritional yeast in it. So nutritional yeast is wonderful. It tastes like it's got that cheesy flavor to it. All right. And you mix that in, it makes it really thick, like a sauce. And then you add tons of spices like garlic and uh, basil and oregano, and you could throw the turmeric in there too. It's already orange, but get more orange. Um, and it's really yummy. And I even use that, like I'll make a gluten-free dairy-free mac and cheese and it can't tell the difference in fact i just uh you know i i just made this for some and i i was like oh you know just try it you know and i didn't tell anyone it was gluten-free or it was you know vegan and uh they loved it they couldn't tell the difference so life does go on it was it's, so that's really so have your sauces there if you're a sauce person like me i get it so there's other ways, there's tons of things that you can do. Veggies, full of fiber and they're nutrient dense, right? And fruits, bright colors and flavonoids. So what's it in veggies and fruits, right? There are tons of fiber. Veggies, you've got those, the good macro and nutrients and the micronutrients in those veggies, right? You've got good protein, good carbs, good fats. In fruits, you've got all the fiber, but you've got the sugar. So bottom line, is that what you want? Is that good for you? But what do fruits have? And veggies, they also have those bright colors. Those are those flavonoids, really, really good for our health. Um, I love my dice for our garlic, right? It's great for the immune system because it's a natural antibiotic natural antiviral. It's really good for your immune system. You take it, your immune system kind of knows what to do with it. Okay. That's why food as medicine and the tons of spices. So use your spices, turmeric, ginger, rosemary. Rosemary is really good for, so you have some brain fog that can happen a lot with autoimmune condition, clove, sage, cinnamon being warming. Okay. So if you're cold, you have some cinnamon. If you're, if you're kind of hot, you're feeling that, that feverish, have, have a nice cup of peppermint tea. Okay. Mints are cooling. So know what your herbs do for your body is important as well. All the healthy habits that you can do. So exercise, right? Movement is key. You got to move it. So I love talking about the blood type specific diet because sometimes people are stuck and they don't know what to do, or they're bored, or they're not getting the results, right? Anyone been like that? So I love to talk about this. So O's, um, O's are really great with doing strength training, particularly first thing in the morning. So why? Because different blood types release cortisol, the stress hormone differently. So this is where it's important. Um, A's, more relaxing, like yoga and Pilates, even meditating could be really good for A's can make a huge difference in your health. Bees, doing things outside like hiking, tennis, golfing. I mean, being outside is great for everyone with the negative ions in nature. Can't beat it, right? Um, but being active while in nature, bees kind of, it kind of works for them. 
ABs are a good mix of everything, okay? They do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. That's what they need. Uh, with joint pain, of course, tread lightly. I was doing that. I, was, I went from, you know, my 15, 17, 20 pound weights down to like three pounds. And it, ugh, it was just so weird. You know, my workouts were really affected. I get it. So you got to, you, you have to tread lightly, use caution, but still try and move the body. And these are some other things I'm going to talk about um, because staying active will release the stress hormones. Um, using essential oils that help also, right? Essential oils, you need to use it for stress. Um, in general, do you, do you have nasal congestion? You want to use some eucalyptus, lavender for stress release. There's a whole world of essential oils. Depression, use some bergamot, some citrus oils that helps to give a little boost to your mood. Infrared sauna. So there are infrared lamps. You can get them at home. Infrared is great. It penetrates into the tissue and it's anti-inflammatory. Um, so you can even have it over your abdomen. If you have some inflammation in your gut, people feel better. And it's also like calming and soothing and it's, it's uh, healing also that infrared. It's really great. Uh, dry brushing or doing a lymphatic massage. Dry brushing is safer now because we can't really be out there having, um, getting a lymphatic massage. But um, I talk about this all the time. I have handouts. If anyone's interested, just let me know. You go in circular motions towards your heart to support that lymphatic system right? We're talking about our immune system. Our lymph is really important. Get that moving. What also moves that exercise? So if you can't exercise because you're in pain, do the dry brushing. It's going to help. Getting sunshine. I'm going to talk about vitamin D. Negative ions. So nature is full of it. It supports our parasympathetic nervous system. It's really good for our health to be relaxed and being that parasympathetic nervous system mode more often than in that sympathetic nervous system mode meditation. So I do my midweek meditation. Anyone who hasn't tuned in, tune in. I talk about this a lot, the power of meditation. It's healing. Even if you could do it for a minute, just try it. Uh, detox the negative thoughts. So self-talk, oh, autoimmune condition. You're rejecting yourself. A lot of people have this self-talk, like I'm not good enough. You say mean things to yourself, whether you mumble it onto your breath or you're saying it in your head, what's the self-talk? Do you have to understand it? You have to understand it to turn around. You just can't start, you know, uh, telling yourself, oh, I'm happy. I'm good. When, if you're not truly feeling that way, you have to understand how you're truly feeling. Where's this negative self-talk? Where does it come from? and make it better, right? So you can feel better. Stress relief, huge, okay? Where do, are you stressed out? Where does it come from? I always ask my patients, what's your stress on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the most, where does it lie? I ask this every time because every time I just, I need to know, I want to know. If there's something going on that needs to be, um, that needs to be dealt with, it's, it's important. Uh, adequate sleep. So are you sleeping, right? The brain. So I talk about this glymphatic system with a G where our brain detoxes in the middle of the night, right? It's all connected. Our whole body's connected. Sleeping helps. Okay. And think about also that 3 p.m. time during the day is the most inflammatory time. 3 a.m. is the most anti-inflammatory time. So why do people have these reactions with their chronic inflammation around 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock? because it's an inflammatory time that's going on in the world. 3 a.m. is when we're in that deep sleep. For the most part, you want proper circadian rhythm, right? Balancing, working with the world. You feel better when you're vibing with the universe and the earth, how it's, how it's rotating. Um, it's important. Uh, proper excretion. So how are you pooing? And what are you pooing out? What does it look like? Are you, are you having a daily poo? Are you constipated? What's going on there, right? Is there inflammation in the gut? Do you have a, if you're not, if you're constipated, then you've got toxic load in the body. Uh, you're not feeling good, right? Um, and urination also. So it's all, these questions are all very important. Vitamin D3, I can't stress this enough. Low vitamin D3 is linked with autoimmune conditions. Okay, the, the benefits, but you have to have the right vitamin D. So you can't just be taking any old vitamin D and any old amount because it's a fat soluble vitamin. So very dangerous that if you have too much of it, it becomes toxic in the body. A, D, E, and K, you don't want too much of it. Uh, it promotes regulatory T cells, which protects against autoimmunity, differentiates between invader cells and self cells, and it regulates the immune system. Huge. So supplements, so based on labs or clinical observation, uh, so probiotic, right? Gut health is so important. So getting a good probiotic for you, okay? D 
different ones. Vitamin D3, making sure you have the proper vitamin D3 levels. Optimal between 60 and 80. Anywhere below that, you're deficient. Anywhere above that, you're taking too much. It's not good either. So if you're, <coughs> excuse me, deficient, you got to get it to the right spot. Rule of thumb, every 10 points before, below 60, supplement with 2,000 IU a day. So oftentimes people need more than 2,000 IU a day and it's fat soluble. So you take that with the food, right? With the good fat. Tons of anti-inflammatory herbs, whole world of them. Antioxidant support. Do you need omega-3s? Are your omega, is your omega-3-6 ratio off? That, that's not always the case, okay? But it could be. Zinc, you can also get that tested, but zinc is, you know, it's, it's a pretty good one to help balance out your immune system. Um, you know, it helps uh, to, to fight against the viruses. So, um, you know, that, that's a pretty good one to have on hand. You can also get that tested. Uh, zinc in the red blood cell. Selenium is great. So that's easy enough. You can test for that, but why not just have a Brazil nut or two a day? You get your daily dose of selenium, plus you get a good food. It works. Quercetin possibly could help. So caution with the immune boosters because with an autoimmune condition what are we trying to do calm down the inflammation calm down the immune system okay it's all about immune modulation so find a practitioner who understands this because it's specific to you so i hope that everyone understands i um of course i had a lot to cover uh but you can follow me on instagram so at Dr. Dawn ND, Dr. Dawn ND. I'm always posting things. I'm always posting food. I'm always posting uh, my lectures. I've been doing a lot of them lately while we've been in quarantine. Uh, lots of these webinars coming up. I love connecting with you guys. So uh, happy to connect there. You can follow me also on my Facebook page. Uh, slash Dr. Dawn ND. Please email me if you have any questions. I know a lot of questions came up and I don't know how much I will be able to get to them, but I'm going to try. Um, and then follow, you know, check out our website. We've got a bunch of wonderful naturopathic doctors at Inner Source Health and we have our YouTube page. Please subscribe to it. It's free and it's all great information uh, that, that, you're, that is available to you. So just go to our YouTube page, our Inner Source Health YouTube page. So let's see. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. So I've got, so, you know, anyone who wants to stick around, I, I'll just go through these questions here. Hi, Sandra. Um, got tons of people there on Facebook. Okay. So let's see. Many and lacks. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So, okay. Oh, uh, okay. So Mark said many MDs, uh, medical doctors lack listening skills and expertise, plus their ego inhibits a patient's access or path to wellness. My mother passed recently after decades of this medical allopathic medicine fault. I am sorry, Mark. My heart goes out to you. Um, I, uh, I, I've been through it. Um, my dad, uh, the reason why I, I do what I do is because um, my dad was very, very sick for years. Um, and, you know, there was, there was a day on, on his deathbed and I had a conversation with the doctor and um, he wouldn't even look up from the chart and didn't even make eye contact with me. Um, and I knew in my heart that is no way to talk to a daughter whose father is dying. Um, I'm about to get all sad thinking about it because uh, it's not right. I agree. Yes. So the fatigue at three o'clock. So, um, so yeah, Mark, if you have any questions, um, I went through that. Um, oh my God, I can't believe I just got choked up on a webinar. Um, but that is why, you know, I do what I do. Um, cause there is another way. So, so, um, so yeah, Mark, if you have any questions, it's all in here. Uh, let's see. I agree with what you're saying. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, I found working with integrated doctor really helped me. I've also done a lot with mind body therapy and diet. I've seen results and I believe in this. I find that meds, okay. Yeah, help with inflammation in the hands. I don't think everyone can simply go natural. Trust me, that's not easy. I say what I've found, however. Yeah, so, you know, everyone's got their own path. Um, and if you need uh, medication, I'm, you know, who am I to say not to do it? but I'm here to share my story. I help my patients. Um, it worked for me, um, you know, and, but if you can combine it, you know, so I work with, I do, you know, combined therapy. So, 
you, you can have a naturopathic doctor on your team to also share with your doctor uh, what the therapies are that you're doing to have combined care, and that can help also. Oh, so what product supplements did I use to help me detox the heavy metals? So I had mercury and aluminum poisoning and I use NAC, N-acetylcysteine to detox, but I had mercury and aluminum. Why? Because I was eating fish and it was vital choice. It was healthy fish. Okay. Um, that was mercury, low in mercury. Um, and I was, I was baking it in my glass dishes in aluminum foil mercury and aluminum. I also wasn't using um, healthy deodorants at the time. So I cleaned that up. Um, I got the fish out of my diet. Well, actually, um, I was, I, I took it down a notch. I now no longer um, eat seafood. But yeah, uh, at that time I was. And um, so that's what it did. Um, I retested the, the heavy metals. Um, it was about six months later. Um, and it was undetected. With the, with the aluminum and the mercury. So that's how, but everyone's different. So it's always a different path. So this wellness journey is, is different for everyone. Oh yeah, so nutritional yeast is full of B12. So, and it's not going to make anything rise. It has a cheddary, cheesy flavor to it. Uh, so I use it for that purpose. Nutritional yeast, a lot of vegans will use it because it's high in B12. Um, it's really flaky. It can be a little dry. So I like baking it. I love putting and making my sauces out of it. Um, so pull it full of the B12. It has some other B vitamins too. Um, you know, and baking. So, so there's other things. Yeast could be. Yeah. So you can test for candida, you know, if, if you have an overgrowth of that. Um, what do I do instead of, so you could use brewer's yeast. Um, which is, you know, uh, also nutritious and full of B vitamins. Instead of, if you don't want to use yeast for cooking, you use baking soda and you squeeze some lemon in it, right? Right before baking and it, it gets all bubbly and everything like that. And that, and that'll, that'll make, um, any kind of breads that you're cooking on your own or cakes rise. It's good. Uh, thanks Valerie. Awesome. Thanks Mark. Okay, great. So I think I answered, oh, maybe I keep having messages coming true. <laughs> Yeah, Amy, I hear you. Yeah, there's, uh, keep trying, you know, and that's, uh, I hope that I've inspired you today um, to keep finding the answers to what ails you. If you don't feel well, uh, find a doctor who will help you to feel better. Okay. Um, and there, yeah, I agree, Mark, they, the ego should not be in it. So, you know, doctors are, you know, if that ego can, um, can really, of be in the way of finding your own wellness and, and that ego, you know, they can just trip and fall over that. Um, that's not going to help, you know, so having a good, a doctor who knows when to refer out is key um, to have that combined care if you want. But sometimes there's certain doctors you have to meet along the way They give, they put, they put together these pieces of the puzzle and then it gets solved. So I hope that I've inspired and I hope that there's healing found throughout this. Um, thanks for joining and I'll see you guys soon on another webinar or email me or hope to meet you in person when this is all said and done. Uh, and I'm doing telehealth. So if you're interested in that, uh, you, we, can, uh, we accept many insurances too. So you can call my office, 631-421-1848. Speak to Lindsay. She can look into that for you. Um, and so we're doing telehealth, which means that there's video conferencing. Um, you can do, schedule a 10 minute uh, free consult with me if you're curious how naturopathic medicine can help your health. And uh, I'll be happy to schedule that if you want to email me or call the office and we can have a discussion to, uh, to take it from there and see how naturopathic medicine can help. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.